right, so let's talk about this concept of the sociological imagination, getting out of our own head to examine issues related to society from two different perspectives. Now these are the two basic types of perspectives that sociologists use in their work every single day. The first of these is the micro perspective and this looks at the concept of what we call agency. Now agency is not about a building that you go to to find information such as the driver's license agency. Agency used from a sociological point of view is the individual's ability to make choices in society. Choices that aren't guided by anything but their own desires, their own needs, their own wish fulfillment. This is the concept of free will. So in a nutshell, agency is the ability of you as a person to make decisions in your world that you want to make. It's individual choice. On the other side of this equation is the macro perspective. And this is where many sociologists concentrate their studies on this idea of how the structure influences the individual. Does the structure or do those social forces that exist outside of the individual have any impact on the decisions that we make, the choices that we have. And sociologists would say absolutely yes, that the structure has a much bigger influence on the individual than the individual can on the structures of society. We recognize both pieces of the equation, but for most sociologists today, not all, but most, we would say that the structure has a big role in the choices that you are able to make in your individual life. So another way of viewing this or defining these concepts of micro and macro are the terms solidarity and social control. So when as an individual you're able to um, form relationships around kinship and shared values, then we have high levels of solidarity. When, however, the structure of society has too much bearing on your life as an individual, we have higher levels of social control. So you can see the interplay between the micro and the macro. Some people definitely have more control over their lives than others. Some people are definitely influenced more by the structures of society than others. For contemporary American sociologists, uh, most of us would agree that the structure has a lot of control over most Americans, uh, but you do end up with some ability to influence the structure the higher up in the class system you go. We would also assert that uh, the more power you have as an individual in society, the more control you can have, the more agency you can have the more choices you have available to you. So having talked about the micro and macro perspective, one of the questions that you might be asking yourself is, well, what happens when the macro has too much of an influence on the micro? What happens when the structure of society becomes so overpowering that the individual feels a loss of control? Well, there was an interesting research study done in 1897 by a French sociologist by the name of Emile Durkheim. And he studied the concept of suicide in relationship to the micro and macro, the structure and the agency. And he came up with some pretty interesting observations. He said that suicide depends on social conditions. Hmm. Now I want you to think about that. When we think of the concept of suicide, we tend to think of it as a very individualistic type of action. Something that, because of the individual's personal 
um, issues or concerns they choose to do. We don't think about suicide in terms of the influence by the structure on the individual. But Emil Durkheim, through his research, was able to demonstrate that there is indeed a link between uh, the micro and the macro and suicide rates in any given country. All right, so how did Emil Durkheim set about making this link between the structure of society and suicide rates? Well, the first thing he did was he identified this concept of anomie. This is a French word, and it describes the lack of social norm. So in a society where you have um, confusion, where people aren't sure about what their roles are, when the government is struggling to uh, satisfy the needs of the people, or, for example, when you have a corrupt government that doesn't care about its people, you have really high levels of anomie. If you have high levels of anime, suicide rates increase. Now Durkheim's study was a little bit more complex than that. So what Durkheim does is he identifies four different conditions under which anime can exist. And he says that these conditions are related to whether or not the structure has more influence or the individual has more control. So it's interesting how Durkheim went about conducting this study. He looked at different suicide rates among uh, Protestants and Catholics, and he argued that the stronger social control among Catholics resulted in lower suicide rates. So according to him, Catholic society has a relatively normal level of integration, while Protestant society had a lower level of integration. And so Durkheim said that these variations in rate were because of the integration that individuals felt into the bigger society. So he comes to this conclusion that there are different types of suicide that we will see. And obviously now you can see here that uh, the less solidarity an individual feels, the more likely they are to become depressed. Uh, the more solidarity that an individual feels, the more likely they are to feel an obligation to society. And so there are different types of suicide, according to Durkheim. When you're depressed, you commit suicide for very personal reasons. When you feel obligated to society and you're not living up to those expectations, you commit suicide for very altruistic reasons. Along with that, he talks about the issue of how the structure influences suicide rates. And he talks about this in terms of more social control versus less social control. He says when individuals feel too much social control, the structure of society is having too much of a bearing on that individual, and that individual can't live up to those expectations, the individual can have a feeling of hopelessness. This he calls fatalistic suicide. It's where the person gives up and says, I just can't do what's expected of me. He says when individuals experience less social control, they have a feeling of insecurity. They're not sure about where they fit in. They're not sure about what they are supposed to be doing. And so in this case, anomic suicide is the type of suicide that people will experience. So not to get too much into it, but you can see how he really did plan out his entire uh, research project based on these concepts of does the individual have enough or too much control versus does the structure have enough or too much control over the individual. He said that suicide depends on social conditions. And this is probably one of the first uh, research studies that was able to put sociology on the map with regard to connecting the scientific process to the study of society. Are there methodological issues related to his research? Absolutely. However, it's still recognized to be one of the most important studies 
um, in sociology.